going to get it. Yeah. So I went to this concert last night. It was a Tejano concert. It was pretty good. Was it last night? I guess it was last night. And we saw little Joe, who's the Mexican Elvis. <laughs> and you have the and hair and everything. So I go up to the bar, and they have, like, Jim Bean. They have Crown. And the Crown's in, like, gallon glass jars, which I thought was weird. But they have Jim Bean in the Crown, and everything's in handles. And uh, uh, Fireball and Jim Bean Apple, which wasn't the... And so I asked for a Jim... Jim Apple's not bad. I said, that's not for me. Oh. So I asked for a Jim Bean um, straight, a double, Jim Bean straight. And the guy's like, I'm like, bourbon, Jim Bean straight, because he doesn't speak English. And so he goes over there, and he grabs the Jim Bean and looks at me. And I'm like, yeah. And so he takes it, and he puts it in a cup, and then he grabs this mango stuff and starts, well, at first he's getting ice. I'm like, no, 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 straight. And he's like. Okay. Puts Jim Bean in the cup. Then he grabs this mango stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And so this other person comes over and goes, what do you want? I said, I want Jim Bean doubles straight, neat. And she's like, oh. And he looks at the guy and says, solo, shot, solo. And he's like, okay. So I get that and I go. That's good to and know, I, actually. Yeah. And I taste it. And I'm like, damn it. He got like a bit of mango, a bit in, of mango in there. And it, was like, and it was the last of the Jim Bean. So I drink it. And so my friend who speaks fluent Spanish, she orders an extra and she brings me Crown Royal. And I'm like, something's wrong with this Crown Royal. Mango. And so, no, I discover that they're, they're in these giant glass Crown Royal bottles. Everything's in gallon bottles, but they're like, they look like candles. And I decide that they're just watering everything down at the end of the night. So I have my Crown Royal. And then it's my turn to go back up. And actually my wife goes up and she gets this. It gets me a, a crown royal, and then it's my turn. So I got I drank a lot last night, <laughs> so I go up, but it was watered down, so I'm okay. So I go up, and I'm like, look at the dry. I get the same guy, and I'm like, I want crown royal solo, and he's like, he goes up there, grabs a cup, gets ice, and I'm like, no solo. He's like, okay, and I start talking to this person, and he comes with this. Giant cup, full, and it's not Crown Royal. <laughs> he put it like Tapico, um, like it's like seltzer water, uh -huh. and mango in there. And I'm like, dude, solo shot. And he's like, oh, okay. He goes back and he brings it to me. And I'm like, this is going to be a long, long night. Bring me more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh Cheers. Welcome, welcome, everybody. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good, too. And we get to try another fine um, scotch that you gave me, actually, mm -hmm. for Christmas. Famous Grouse. Famous Grouse blended scotch whiskey. So this isn't a um, distilled. It's blended. Well, it's distilled eventually, but or predominantly. Originally, right? It's distilled originally various ones and blended and i don't actually know what's it's blended with however it's from the eddington distillery um producers it's just blended with other scotches blended with other scotches because it's from eddington i might be a little bit excited and um, we'll get to that it is a total wines um, price of 19.99 so that's a four barrel that means this is well within the common man's um, ability to buy a scotch. Now the problem is it is a screw top, not a cork. And this is something that you started with, right? You Didn't you say your first real well, foray into scotch? Was yeah, I'll, I'll tell a abbreviated story. I was like a big whiskey guy in my youth I, for like... 10 years in my 20s, Jack Daniels was my 
go to. It's like, let's get Jack Daniels. That's everybody's go to in their teens and 20s. And then in my 30s, I switched to Wild Turkey, and I was like, for like 10 years, Wild Turkey was my thing. And then I kind of like, I got burnt out on whiskey because it was like, mm-hmm. that so is I, true on the Jack thing. So I started drinking other stuff, and one day they had a um, famous grouse single malt at the grocery store. I lived in Arizona, so you could buy booze at the grocery store. They had it on sale for like 20 bucks, and I'm like, I'll get this just to put on the shelf. It's I'm still not, for 20 bucks. <laughs> I'm not too much into whiskey anymore, so I'll get it. And I took it home. I opened it up and I tried it. I was like, this is good. Yeah, I actually like Famous Grouse. As I said, it's from the Eddington um, producers. And, and they, they produce two other scotches. And I've had single malts before that. I've tried flights and stuff, but mm-hmm. I was just like, yeah. But then when I got that, that, that was my would I say it, I wouldn't say it as my downfall into scotch, but that's where I started to just like buy downfall. Up, that would that's a negative term. Upfall. Upfall. That's your where, the beginning of the road to my scotch. Yeah. There's really no way you can say it and then say scotch where it doesn't sound bad. <laughs> So my foray in the scotch yep. still sounds bad. You're blossoming into scotch. <laughs> you say scotch, and for some reason it sounds bad. It's, Just you. It's a note on the system. So the Eddington Company actually produces several alcohols, but they produce three scotches. Famous Grouse. Oop! I just splashed it on my nose. Oh, rub that in. Bring that. Bring that. <laughs> that what's it called? Just uh, take a little bit. <laughs> More tr- mo- moisturizing cream in there. Um, I don't know why he's laughing. <laughs> so, they produce three scotches. One is Famous Grouse. The other two will surprise you. And I'm hoping that their blend is something to do with those other two. Well, what are the other two? The Macallan. Oh, yeah. And Highland Park. Two of the most prestigious and expensive alcohols. Macallan is made by this? Uh-huh. The Macallan and Highland Park. So well, when you're looking at levels of alcohol, top Highland Park, then you get to the Macallan, and we know how expensive the Macallan can be as far as it's, scotches. It's and then you drop... There, but not- Necessarily, but they have there. quite a few famous grouse. There's some yeah, yeah, expensive yeah. ones. There's a, there's like four various um, famous grouses. But that just gives you an idea of the um, prestige of this company from the makers of Highland Park and the McAllen. It's an 80 proof. And I've been smelling it for a while, so I'll just jump right in there. I'm smelling some oak and, a, and sherry, and it's and I'm, yeah. I'm kind of cheating here. You can smell that sherry. Um, it's it is aged, aged in, in a sherry, sherry cask. Barrels. Yeah, because I was gonna say it's like got that. It's not aged because it's a blended whiskey, and I don't know how that is really determined whether you can actually put an age on blended. I've heard some people say that they age the blended according to the oldest blend they put in there, or they age it to the youngest, youngest. blend. But most people don't, most companies don't put in the age on blended. But they're all, as far as I understand, all the, they're all scotches, they're all aged, and then they just take scotch from different barrels to make it. That's right. what a blend it is. It's no so. different than if you, well, I say no different. I'm, I'm a nobody and not educated and don't know. Actually, I'm highly, I'm highly educated. I have two degrees, but not educated in scotch. Um, I, I don't know that it would be any different than you having your own barrel and taking your favorites and blending them. 
Yeah. Is that your stomach or that dog? <laughs> I thought that was your stomach for a moment. <laughs> All right. Um, aroma. Sharp, pungent, mild, light, and pleasant. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> he's, he's trying to see if it's coming over the camera. I'm pretty sure he's going in there. Oh. If so you don't our know, dog there's is a dog right here that's... and she's really really old and she's suffering some... from some illness so she's, she's snoring really sinus loud. Issues. Sinus issues. She's like she's a great Pyrenees that's like super old. For a great Pyrenees. Yeah. yeah, she's reaching there. I am going to say cuz I get that oak sherry, I get a little citrusy flavor so I am going to Put it at a three and a half as a medium, I'm sorry, as a mild to light. I think Cody said he's doing it as a three. No, I was going to go a three and a half, two. Three and a half, two. A three and a half, two? Or a three and a half also? <laughs> so it's just going to be a running joke forever, isn't it? Yep. I mean, you'll have to go I back and good. watch all the, if you haven't, if you're first time watching this, you have to go back to watch all the episodes to find out where that originated from every episode uh, please if you watch every episode you go back watch it hit the like just hit the like and maybe even share it okay like share i go with the three just because i don't detect a prominent flavor to it aroma i also don't detect a lot of alcohol bite okay i just flavor very alcohol bitter but palpable moderate pleasant and rich Hmm. Wow. Observations. No. It's smooth. It doesn't have a really... There's no real heat to it, no pepper to it, no spice to it. Just a little bit at the tail end. Um, but it's very smooth. However, I am getting the slightest hint and now that I think about it and I've tasted it I can smell it the slightest hint of peat of who? <laughs> not of who of what? peat peat? smoke oh peat <laughs> yeah I see that now that that I, I can like, barely very yeah, yeah very slight taste but now when I, I I make that connection and I go back to smelling the aroma I pick it up but it also could be some sort of other commonality between peatiness yeah. and this. Yeah, it's There's slight small. peaty, smoky. Hmm? It could be maltiness. Yeah, it could be. There's there's a richness to it too that I can't really place. Yeah, it's got a, a depth to it that's kind of yeah. like. However, I'm going to put it as a moderate or a three on the flavor. Um, this is also a great, as you described at the beginning, a great introduction to scotch. Yeah, I, I would say a three. I'd, I'd lean a little three and a half, but I'm going to go with a three. I'm going three and a half. Oh my god. What? <laughs> you killed like me. Your... I'm definitely doing a three and a half on bite because there is no real bite but it's not smooth and I think I find it fairly smooth actually I go with a four. I might be mistaken com to me it's completely non-existence on the first sip with only a numbing bite on the tail end okay. it's barely noticeable I would go with a four on the bite I, I might be mistaken but I think this comes in handles it's and nice. if it came in handles That'd be a good thing to have on your bowl. I would almost assume that you could almost get in almost anything in. Did I say almost? How many times have I said almost? Almost a lot. You could almost get just about anything in handles. Uh, I Except I for, or. I don't think you could get basil in handles. I bet you you could. They may not look like handles, 
They may not have it. I don't know. That's that would be interesting. You can't get it at your local store. But I don't know that you could get it. You as a purchaser could get it, but if you were a a (laughs) oh they they make big stuff just Mm -hmm. for displays and titles. That's cheap. So waiting on you, bite. Oh, on the bite, I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Three and a half. So you and I are together. Cody's a half point more than us. We're at 14. Cody's at 14 and five. Either way, it's at a three and a half barrel. Because it doesn't. If count. we went to 15, then we could edge it into the four barrel. But we're at a three and a half barrel, and I'm perfectly fine with a twenty dollar scotch at being three and a half. It's it's definitely a, another intro to the Scotch world, like um, our Glenn Morangi from a couple episodes ago. Yeah, it's like somebody who interested in scotch but never tried it. Let's. I, I kind of wish that they ahead. went with a cork, but <laughs> that's just me. Maybe that's what keeps it the one penny below twenty dollars. Yeah, I'm I'm like a I'm. <laughs> Bias with it. I'm like screw cap, and, and unfortunately, because it's a screw cap, my corks that I have because I have a bag full of corks that doesn't I bought doesn't fit in there. Doesn't fit in there. Um, if you are a person who has a bar, um, and shelves that go on for bars, if you have a lot of Nobody alcohol, um, you should buy a um. A bag of corks. Go on Amazon, buy a bag of corks. Not that Amazon's supporting me. But we have come across several bottles where the corks fail. Um, most notably in our bullets for some reason. Yeah, for some Our some bullet reason. bourbons, um, nearly every cork has failed. But they also have a, I don't think unique cork, but a definitely different cork than okay. most other ones. It's a much finer grain of cork material, and it mm-hmm. does tend to just cut right off. We um, are able to remove that cork from the bullets. The Putnam, which is a Boston brewery or Boston distillery, that cork's been floating in there and we just can't get it out. Yeah. Ooh, you just. But it's, these are the corks. The synthetic rubber. Synthetic, yeah. yeah. And they work. So I definitely think about um, if you have a bar, a home bar, picking up a bag of cork, because nothing worse than having your cork broke and then you don't know what to do. And you can't always take another cork from an empty bottle and use it. Not always, so. Because if you don't, and the cork breaks, you gotta polish this thing off that night. Oh, darn. No, <laughs> no well. And Amazon, if you're watching, you should probably go ahead and sponsor us. Why? Because we just promoted them. To get corks. To get corks. All right, so, um, yeah, make sure you hit the like and subscribe, share the channel, check out the merchandise. Um, if you've noticed, um, we've been wearing the same shirts for a while. Um, it's just because it's the most comfortable shirt for our mics, which I'm messing with. And, and it's not like I'm wearing the same shirt. I got like 37 of these. I only have I one, went, so I wash it a lot. I, went, I have lots of shirts, just this is the only one like this. I went to the merch store and I just bought like 56 of these or something. No, he's, I'm lying. He's lying. I got yeah. one. Um, but we also um, have trying to. Um, I'll be gone next weekend. Of course, that'll be passed by the time you see this episode. But I'm trying to uh, do a few episodes ahead of time. So that's why we're wearing the same shirt. Right? That's right. Remember, there's no bad we whiskey. Don't do that every time. Never. never. We never, ever, <laughs> ever. Sarcasm warning on the screen. Actually, one day, soon, for all of you, we'll have our studio fixed. Right now, it's halfway cleaned out. Well, a quarter way cleaned out. We're working on our studio. And we'll have a wardrobe in there. Once the studio is fixed and we no longer have to worry about put up and take down um, of our cameras and lights and everything, we probably could just film possibly not even transfer if we hook it up to a computer. Yep. Things will be easier and we might actually produce more episodes per week. 
Because I'll be easier. Wishful thinking. Any 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 avenue to drink daily is something we're looking at. <laughs> the daily pour. The that daily sounds... pour. <laughs> So remember, there's no bad whiskey. There's only good whiskey and great whiskey. And this is a pretty good whiskey for your introduction to scotch. Cheers. Cheers. Later. We'll see you next time. What's wrong with drinking every day? It's in uh, moderation. Look, I only had this much to drink today. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is our fourth episode and I was drinking earlier. So, yeah. And I haven't eaten anything, so... I'm not carrying you home. I'm going to ride back from home. Yeah, you good luck with that. Get like out to the driveway and she'll drop me off and say, I'm going back in the house to snore some more. <laughs>